Hi, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the process that we're going to use within Restore for appointing elders and also the responsibility that we see elders carrying over the life of Restore. So if we start first with the responsibilities, um, from my reading of the New Testament, really there's three primary responsibilities for elders in a church. Uh, number one, the elders are the group of people who are responsible for the vision that the church carries. Now we know as Restore, uh, our vision is just behind me from Isaiah 61. And so as we look to appoint a team of elders, we want a group of people who carry Isaiah 61 in their hearts. So when you think about the best bits of Restore, when you think about our heart for community, when you think about our heart for mission, when you think uh, about our heart for inclusive church, when you think about our heart for a church with worship and uh, with the gifts of the Spirit in operation, then we're looking for a group of people who embody that vision and who you feel comfortable knowing that they're the ones responsible for making sure that we fulfill that vision. So part of the vision requirement is capturing the, the heart and the essence of who God's called us to be as Restore. The second bit of that, just to flag as well, is people that carry the theology of Restore as well. And so ultimately it's the elders that have the responsibility for, for overseeing, for guarding and for guiding the teaching within the life of Restore. So around that, we're looking to appoint people who get Isaiah 61, who are clearly aligned in terms of their lives to the lifestyle of Jesus. We're wanting people that are comfortable with women, with releasing women into uh, ministry and leadership and governmental leadership. We want people who are, um, who welcome the work of the Holy Spirit and are, are fluent in the gifts of the Spirit in their lives. So some of the key bits of Restore Theology, uh, we want a group that already embody that so that we know that they will uh, lead us safely forward in that. So number one, it's about carrying the vision of Restore. Number two, it's about shepherding the flock of Restore. Now, that doesn't mean that as soon as we appoint an elder, if you want any help on any level in terms of pastoral support, you'll, you'll ring the elders. Um, in reality, you won't, um, because we delegate some of that responsibility, because that enables us to multiply and grow as a church. What we do want, though, is a group of people who are overseeing that. So they're making sure that we look after each of our uh, location leaders, that they make uh, sure that we look after each of our location leadership teams. They make sure there's good pastoral care in each of our locations and in certain con conditions or situations where there's maybe a level of complexity or a, a level of spiritual authority required, they can come and help uh, intervene and work and bring support into those pastoral situations. So one of the responsibilities is around vision, one is around shepherding the flock and the third one is around praying over the life of restore and carrying what we do in the spirit. We know we frequently um, refer to Ephesians chapter 6 about the fact that we don't wage warfare against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And we want people that carry a weight in the spirit of God and an authority when they pray. We've just set up a group of gatekeepers who are praying over the life of Restore. And part of the elders' responsibility will be to work with that group to make sure that all that we have, all that we do is soaked in meaningful prayer and that we see um, God move in power in the situations where we need to see him move in power. You know, James chapter 5 says, if, if anyone's sick, they should call the elders of the church, and the elders will come because they carry a spiritual authority and pray and release healing. So three main responsibilities for the elders, the, the shaping and the overseeing of the vision of Restore, the, uh, ensuring that there's a good shepherding of the flock of Restore, and thirdly, carrying spiritual authority in the prayer life of Restore. Now, the process that we're using for appointing uh, elders within the life of Restore is um, we're asking people to nominate who they think would be a good elder. And we've got a process for nominating, which is really simple in terms of the process at least. Um, we've set up a new email address, which is elders at restorecc.org.uk. And we're inviting committed uh, members of Restore to pray over between the 9th and the 30th of January, to pray over who might be a good elder or might be good in terms of joining the eldership team and to nominate them. Now, you don't need to talk to the person that you're thinking of nominating. Okay, you nominate them and then we will have a conversation with them if we think that we should take the nomination uh, process uh, forward with them. 
And all you have to do is pray over who might be a good uh, elder and then send an email to elders at restorecc.org.uk and nominate that person. It's optional, but you can, if you would like to, write why you think this particular person would be a good choice to be an elder into the next season. If you're going to be somebody um, who is going to nominate or you're thinking about um, do I qualify to be a member of Restore who can nominate an, a leader, of, a, an elder in Restore? Um, for me, there's three qualifications for um, nomination. Uh, number one, um, you need to be 16 or above. If you're younger than that and you've got an opinion, talk to your parents because they can nominate, they can take that on board in their nominations. But we're asking people for 16 and above uh, to have the ability to nominate. Secondly, we're looking for people who are committed members of Restore, by which I mean you attend regularly and so you uh, attend regularly uh, Sunday gatherings and uh, also small groups and thirdly you carry a heart for restore by which I mean that you're invested in the life of restore what does that mean that means that you're someone who who does currently or has historically regularly served into the life of restore and also regularly financially given into the life of restore because obviously you're gonna if you're gonna have an influence over the choice for the leadership of restore then that needs to be come from people that are in invested in the life of Restore. So they're the qualifications in terms of people who we're inviting to nominate as, as elders as Restore. Um, are there any rules in terms of who you can nominate, who you can't nominate? Well, don't nominate someone who isn't currently a member of Restore. We're also asking um, that you don't nominate immediate family members. So we want there the to be some independence in terms of the nomination process. In terms of age, um, I don't think there's any um, minimum age that we're going to put in terms of potential elders, apart from the fact that we want someone that has a maturity in their character and has a proven walk with Jesus. And I don't think, I don't think you can judge that on the basis of age. That's why we're not putting any specific age on it. But we do want somebody that has a proven character and a track record of wa walking with Jesus. So I think that's really important. Um, one of our uh, golden rules around eldership is that uh, non-salaried, so non-staff members of, uh, uh, of Restore are going to be the majority of the elders. So staff members will be in the minority. However, if there is a staff member who you think might make a good elder, you can still nominate them. But we're going to ensure that the overall team reflects uh, the diversity of Restore and is not uh, salaried, primarily salaried members of Restore. And just to say a little bit more about the process that we're going to go through. Uh, step one is uh, to nominate people, candidates, um, and you can do that between the 9th and the 30th of January. Elders at restorecc.org.uk is the means by which you do that. We are then uh, appointing a group of people that will steward the process of appointing elders. And so I'm working with Pauline Doyle, the chair of trustees, to agree on the uh, group of people, kind of like a selection panel for that. And uh, what we're uh, doing at the moment is beginning conversations with people who've either previously been elders or previously been trustees or served in similar positions in other churches. And we're going to put together a kind of independent panel that will help uh, lead us through the process. So once we uh, see and uh, find out who's been nominated, that group is going to pray over that list. Um, a, a short list will be drawn from that, and those people will be invited to interview. Out of the interview process, we'll then pray over it. And uh, we're hoping to come up then with a, a group of elders. And uh, what we will do then is we will communicate the group of people that uh, have been through this process that we propose to form the eldership team for Restore Community Church. And then there'll be an opportunity to uh, hopefully affirm that group, but also for, uh, in case anyone knows any reason that would disqualify the, for them, there's the opportunity for every member of Restore to, to know and reflect on that group. Um, and then we will look to appoint them probably somewhere around Easter, um, depending on how the process goes. So I would really, really um, encourage you to be praying uh, over this process. I'd really appreciate that. And as I say, between the 9th and the 30th of Jan is when you can start to nominate people to become an elder of Restore.